In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate an icon in After Effects. I'm Isara and you can find me at uxemotion.net where I teach designers how to animate their UI projects in After Effects. I'm really excited about today's tutorial because icon animations are such a cool opportunity for designers. You can add usability, you can add more personality, and a lot of people don't do it because they think it's complicated. And I'm gonna show you a couple really cool, simple techniques to get you going on your projects. We're gonna be focusing on the After Effects Trim Paths tool. It's a really, really cool tool. You're gonna to love it. I'm gonna be coming in from Illustrator this time. Typically, I work from Photoshop to After Effects because the workflow is really good. Um, but in this case, I found that doing the icon animations, the workflow is just a little better from Illustrator. So we're gonna come from there. And lastly, if you wanna download the lessons and follow along, you can do that by clicking the link in the video that just magically popped up, yay. Or you can scroll down and uh, in the text, I'll have a link there for you to click and download the assets so you can follow along. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be creating in After Effects in a second. You can see we've got this cool little icon animation going on and we're using the Trim Paths tool a lot in this tutorial. So I'm basing this off of this cool UI animation that uh, Creative Dash did. You can check them out on Dribbble. They're awesome, awesome guys. I've also created a Micro Interactions uh, Pinterest page, and I've gone through and I've just annotated and critiqued every pin on this page. So if you wanna learn more about what to think about, considerations, best practices, go check this out. Um, and if this is more of an intermediate tutorial, so if you don't, if you're totally lost, you're like, dude, what the heck? Um, or if you've never used After Effects before, go to uxmotion.net slash fast start. It's also in the link um, below the video. And go watch my, um, my fast start video. It's for designers who have never worked on a timeline or with keyframes or anything like that. It's a great place to get started. Watch that, come back, and then watch this tutorial and you'll be uh, caught up a bit more. Okay, so... I'm first going to show you how I set up the Illustrator file. And like I said, in this case, uh, I prefer working in Illustrator because the workflow is really, really nice. So you may start off thinking like you would just need to design your start and stop frames or your frame one and two and then bring that into After Effects and animate it. You could, I recommend like really thinking about what you want to create and putting in the time to make something that's going to work for you. So this is the file we're working with. Uh, it's you know, it's a little bit, things are in pieces basically because we're building this sort of unique animation using these assets. So this is what we're gonna be working with. So I just save this as, uh, you know, with layers in uh, like Illustrator, bring that into After Effects, and I'm just gonna open a new document here and import our design, get started. Okay, so you wanna make sure you bring it in as composition retain layer sizes double click that guy. First thing we're gonna do is select all our layers. If you control click, you can go to create shapes from vector layer. You can only do this from Illustrator files right now. Eventually I hope to be able to do that from Photoshop, but right now it's just from Illustrator. So we're gonna work with that. I locked down the background layer and um, so we don't have to deal with that. That's just this blue solid back here. Okay, now, I'm gonna to wanna to go through and work these one at a time because it can get a little confusing with all the layers and keyframes, especially with the uh, with the shape layers in After Effects. There's so many layers that you're drilling down, it can get a little, uh, a little tough visually and there's a lot of co cognitive load in the UI. So I'll show you a couple uh, techniques that I use. First of all, we're just gonna start with this play left outlines. And if I twirl this down, I can see this is actually a shape layer. There's a group that After Effects made and I can just add a trim paths. So click this little add button here with this arrow, go down, there's a trim paths feature. Nothing's changed here, which is fine. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to use this. This is a great, great technique. The cool thing I like about this workflow is After Effects preserves all the stroke data from Illustrator. So, um, you know, all the sizes, all the shapes, you'd have to rebuild this um, if you came in from Photoshop, unfortunately. So that's why Illustrator is a great way to come through one click, Boom, you got all your content and you're stoked. So check this out. If you've never used the Trim Paths tool, what this does is it allows you to just click and drag and, and animate um, a little crop along the path. And what's cool is it allows you to keep this nice round corner, which is just really, really sweet. So cool. So 
let's do this. Let's start here and bring up these two layers so you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen. We're going to flow around, boom, come around like this. So starting with this first layer here, I'm going to, I like that starting point, and we're going to want to animate this to come down like this. So we're started at 100%, go over 20 frames. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more here so you can see a little bit more in the, in the timeline so it's not all grouped together, which is always kind of weird. So now I can just crank on this guy, click and drag in here, bring it down somewhere around there. That's awesome. And we'll go back and finesse that in a bit. But that's what we're going to be doing for this guy. So this just comes down. And then actually, you know what? We're going to make this guy be 40 frames to do that. Boom. He's going to do that in one movement, just like that. I'm working at 60 frames a second. You can hit Command K and, and go to your frame rate. I always recommend working at 60 when you're doing UI animation projects. It's just a better way of working. You have more frames to work with and it just looks nice. So let's do this like that. That's great. Now, close all this up. I'm going to attack this next layer down here. Contents, you can see again. We're just going to be doing the same thing. We're going to just keep adding that trim paths over and over again. So let's twirl this down and see what we have here. Sometimes you need to mess with it and play with the um, uh, settings before you kind of understand what's going on. So in this case, this is great. I can just click and drag this start. And because I do know we're going to want to animate the start and end point, I'm going to start both of those keyframes. I'm going to jump over 20 frames, and you'll see why in a second. And let's crank on this. Well, we're going to start, I mean, <laughs> yeah, good call, right? We need to start with it in the correct position. So we're going to start with it, move our playback head here, and we can actually start with it exactly where we want it to be. So if, if you're having trouble clicking and dragging, because in this case you're not actually putting in ma manual numbers down in the spot, you can start to click and drag and hold down the Command key, and it lets you go uh, one-tenth the speed so you can kind of really dial in what you want. So that's going to be our starting frame right there, so 12.6 right around there. Now when we go through, now we can put this where we want. So this is going to crank around here like that. That's great. And we're going to start to animate, play with this guy. That's great. So let's just bring this right all the way to the end to where I've designed it. And we can just bring this somewhere right around here, something like that. And that's going to look good. So this, we've just, you know, very quickly just flushed this out. And that's looking awesome. Okay, now I'm going to close this up. And I'm going to put a little guide down here for reference so we can just see where the end of this duder ends. Because I'm going to use that in a second. So there's a, yeah, a little bit of smoke and mirrors here for this this one, but this is how you make cool stuff. You know, sometimes you have to use multiple shapes. So again, twirl down your layer, add trim paths. Cool. Twirl down the trim paths. And I'm going to hide this line. I already did that. Great. I like it when I read my own mind. That's cool. So let's just play with this for a second. You can see that it's it's going the wrong way. So you may not notice this. I notice this. This is going the wrong way when I crank on this on this value here, when I click and drag in there. So what you can do is go into your group itself, go into your stroke, and you'll see that, actually it's not the stroke, it's the path. You can, there's this little grayed out icon, you can reverse the path direction, really, really cool. And then you can close that up, great. And now you can see that it's going the direction we want. And I can click and drag on here and start to mess around with it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna start, I'm just gonna zero these out. And we're just going to play with just a little piece of it for a second. So this is just its default position. We'll make that one. Now I'm going to use this offset feature. I can just slide this around to where I want it to start. I'm going to have it start right about there, maybe a little bit past where uh, where the other one ended. That's why I put this little this guide down here. Cool. So the offset's good, but I'm going to keyframe the start and end right there. And now I can turn back on this layer above it. I'm going to jump over 20 frames and start to crank away on this guy here. And he's going to end right about there. And the one above it, this guy, I'm going to have him come back now. I'm going to swing back on this starting frame, and they're just going to collide at the top at 40 frames out. So now if we scrub through it, you can see that 
you know, this is working. You'll notice this little guy right here. I'm going to take care of that in a second. But now, let's see, we've built it out and it's looking, it's starting to get there, which is great. So you're like, well, what about this little, that guy, right? That's not cool. All right, we're just going to trim this layer. Really, really simple. We're going to go to the uh, full circle outlines layer and go to that frame where we want it to start. And if you hit option left bracket, you can just cut your layer right there. And so now when we back up, it's gone. And because the animation is so fluid, we just pass through it and nobody is any the wiser. Really, really great way to work. And if, if you want to turn off the UI overlays, you can hit Command Shift H and it hides all the stuff. Don't forget that though, because sometimes you'll be like, I'm clicking stuff, it's not selected. Apple R removes the ruler. Command colon removes the guide again. So we have a cleaner way of working. That's looking great. Let's go ahead and attack the final element here and then start to finesse our timing. Cool. So I'm just gonna twirl this guy up, close him, go back to this bottom layer, Command Shift H, make sure I have this on right now. And let's take a look at what we got. So again, add the trim paths. We're just using the trim paths on this one a lot. It's kind of a champ. And when we start here, we can see that there's this whole thing that we just don't want to exist, but it's gonna grow out from the left and come up like this. So let's see if this works. See, it's going the wrong way again. So we're gonna go into our group, twirl that down, reverse the path, click that little button. That is just such a great, they really thought about that one. Now I can just make this disappear. So crank this down to zero, awesome. And let's add two for the start and end. And I'm gonna jump over to the end of our animation, 40 frames out, and I'm just gonna crank this up. And I'm gonna mess with the head now too. I'm gonna hold down Command at the end so I can get it nice and clean at the bottom right there. And just preview that, that's looking sweet. Now you'll notice a couple things here. You'll notice that they, these guys are in the wrong place. They both, this guy, they both need to be scooted up and this guy needs to be trimmed down a little bit. So. I'm gonna bring up my rulers again, bring up my guides, and have this first one match that. So going to the play left outlines, if I hit U on the keyboard, I can now bring up just the keyframe properties, just the keyframes themselves. If I hold Command and click and drag, I can make that work very well. Now we're gonna animate them both going up. And I'm just gonna go old school on this. I, I could use, the uh, transform within the paths, but I'm just gonna use position keyframes because they have keyboard shortcuts associated with it, which is great. So I'm gonna hit Command A to just select all layers. U, just close everything up because there's a lot of stuff going on. Hit Command colon to hide the guides, Command R to hide the, uh, the rulers. So I have a little bit of a cleaner work area to work with again. Double check that I'm at uh, uh, 40 frames. I'm just gonna select these two layers, hit Option P and go over to my left starting point, option P. Actually, I want them to scoot in at, I think around 20 frames. Let's try that. We may need to finesse this. Hit option shift H, because I was uh, I had the, the handles turned off. Sometimes that can cause trouble. You see, I've got the wrong layer selected, so I'm just gonna undo that. Make sure I have the correct layer selected. So we have this layer, this layer, we're at 40 frames, option P, both of those. I'm gonna go out here, option P again, just to set some position keyframes out there. I'm gonna hit K to jump back to my next keyframe and just scoot these guys up. Hit Command Shift H to hide it so visually I can see that it's in the center, lining up good. Okay, great. So now, how's this looking? Okay, so we can see these guys just scrub through it. I'm gonna just preview this real quick and see what's going on. Okay, now I definitely noticed that the curves, they're all linear curves at this point. So we're gonna finesse the curves, we're gonna finesse the timing, and I also wanna get this little bump coming up here, which is just a great little detail. So going back, I'm gonna view my handles again, and I'm gonna overshoot and come back with my position. So I do want it to land here, but I want it to land a couple frames out. Instead, I want it to come up nice and high like that. And you'll notice that it starts moving when this is still growing. I don't like that. So I'm gonna move this start position 
out here and we're just finessing now the animation is built and at this point once you have the mechanics built and all the keyframes blocked out you can start to finesse and start to ease your curves and stuff like that i'm still finessing this so i want to play it through okay so it's pretty well blocked out at this point i can go ahead and ease my curves so a great trick is if you hover over the timeline palette and hit tilde it makes your palette go full screen if you hit uh, command a to select all layers u to select all to view all keyframes you can click and drag all your keyframes control click and go keyframe assistant easy ease now what i'm going to do is if and if you haven't no, if, if, if you don't know how to finesse your velocity curves, go watch my fast start video because I totally cover all this stuff. Now what I can do is I can just go in and change all of my incoming velocity curves so I can smooth it out. So I'm going to make this 89. Click this one here. 89. I'm not going to worry about the position ones. Well, maybe I will. We'll see. 89. Can I do this one? 89. I'm just basically giving them a nice long tail at the end so it just smooths it out a little bit okay and i can hit uh, tilde again to escape preview again and there you go and there you have it and you can spend another hour or two finessing these you know getting the timing nudging things left and right you can do all this kind of stuff but this is the bones of it this is how you build an animation like this using the trim paths tool thank you for watching i hope you got a ton of value out of it it's such a great technique to use um don't forget to subscribe if you want these tutorials sent to you directly to your email. Go to my site, uxemotion.net, hit subscribe, and I'll be sending you these uh, approximately every week or so. No spam or anything like that, just UI animation tutorials, because that's what's cool. All right, thanks. See you.